from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, welcome to the special Cube conversation on secondary storage and data protection, which is one of the hottest topics in the business right now. Cloud, multi-cloud, bringing the cloud experience to wherever your data lives and protecting that data driven by digital transformation. We're going to talk about that with Patrick Osborne, the Vice President and General Manager for Big Data and Secondary Storage at HPE, good friend and CUBE alum. Great to see you again. Thanks Great, for coming thanks on. Great, thanks for having us. So, Let's start with some of those trends that I that I mentioned. I think I think let's start with digital transformation. It's it's a big buzzword in the industry, but it's real. I, I travel around, I talk to customers all the time. Everybody's trying to get digital transformation right. And it, digital means data. Data needs to be protected in in new ways now. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so when we trickle down into your world, data protection what are you seeing in terms of the impact of digital and digital transformation on data protection? Absolutely, uh, great question. So the, the winds of change in secondary storage are, are blowing pretty hard right now. I think there's a couple different things that are driving that conversation. A, uh, the specialization of you know, people with specific backup teams, right? That's moving away, right? You're moving away from general storage administration, specialized teams to you know, people focusing a lot of those resources now on cloud ops team, DevOps team, application development. So they want that activity of data protection to be um, automated and invisible. Uh, like you said before, in terms of being able to reuse that data, the old days of essentially having a primary data set and then pushing it off to some type of secondary storage so it just sits there over time is not something that customers want anymore. Right. They want to be able to use that data, they want to be able to generate copies of that, do test and dev, gain insight from that, being able to move that to the cloud, for example, to be able to burst out there or do it for DR activities. So I think there's a lot of things that are happening uh, when it comes to data that are certainly changing the requirements and expectations around secondary storage. So the piece uh, I want to bring to the conversation is cloud and I saw a stat recently that the average company, the average enterprise has like eight clouds. And I was saying, geez, a small company like ours has eight clouds. Mm -hmm. I mean, the average enterprise must have you know 80 clouds when you start throwing in all the SaaS. Yep. So cloud and specifically multi-cloud, you guys, HPE's always been known for you know, open, open platform, whatever the customer wants to do, we'll do it. So multi-cloud becomes really important. And, and let's expand the definition of cloud to include private cloud on-prem, what yep. we call true private cloud in the Wikibon world, but whether it's uh, Azure, uh, AWS, Google, you know, dot, dot, dot. What are you guys seeing in terms of the pressure from customers mm -hmm. to support multi, they don't want a, a, a silo, a data protection silo for each cloud, right? Absolutely, so they don't want silos in general, right? So I think a couple of key things that, that you brought up. Private cloud is, uh, is very interesting for customers. Whether they're going to go on-prem or off-prem, they absolutely want to have that experience on-prem. So what we're providing customers is the ability through APIs and seamless integration into their existing application frameworks, the ability to move data from point A to point B to point C, which could be primary all flash, secondary systems, cloud targets, but have that be able to um, be automated, full API set, um, and provide a lot of those capabilities, those user stories around data protection and reuse directly to the developers, right? And the database admins and whoever is you know, doing the, this new sort of DevOps um, area. The second piece is that, like you said, everyone's going to have multiple clouds. And what we want to do is we want to be, be able to give customers an intelligent experience around that. We don't necessarily need to own all the infrastructure, right? But we need to be able to facilitate and provide the visibility of where that data is going to land and over time, with uh, our capabilities that we have around InfoSight, we want to be able to do that predictively, make recommendations, have that whole population of customers learn from each other, and provide some, you know, some expert analysis for our customers as to where to place workloads. These trends, Patrick, they're all interrelated, so they're not, <clears throat> not distinct. And, and before we get into the hard news, I want to kind of double down on, on, on another piece of this. So you got data, you got digital, which is data. You've got new pressures on data protection. You've got the cloud scale, a lot of diversity. We didn't even talk about the edge. You mm. know, that's a, another sort of piece of it. Um, but people want to get more out of their data protection investment. They're kind of sick of just spending on insurance. 
they'd like to get more value out of it. You mentioned DevOps before, yep. better access to that data, certainly compliance, uh, things like GDPR have, have heightened uh, awareness of, of things that you can do with the data, uh, not just for backup, and not even just for compliance, but actually getting value out of the data. Your thoughts on that trend? Yeah, so from, from what we see for our customers, they absolutely want to reuse data, right? So we have uh, a ton of solutions for our customers around you know, very high latency, you know, low latency, high performance optimized flash storage in 3PAR and Nimble, uh, different capabilities there. And then being able to take that data and move it off to a hybrid flash array, for example, and then do workloads on that is something that we're doing today with our customers natively, uh, as well as you know, partnering with some of our ISV ecosystem. And then sort of an, a couple new use cases that are coming is that I want to be able to have data provenance, so I want to share some of my data, keep that in a colo, but be able to apply uh, compute resources, whether those, those are VMs, whether they are functions, Lambda functions, on that data. So we want to bring the compute to the data, and that's another use case that we're enabling for our customers. And then ultimately, using uh, the cloud as a very, very low cost, scalable, and elastic tier of storage for archive and retention. One of the things we've been talking about in, in the Cube community is you hear that bromide data is the, the new oil, and, and somebody in the community was saying, you know what, it's actually more valuable than oil. When I have oil, I can put it in my house or I can put it in my car. Mm. But data, the unique attribute of data is I can use it over and over and over again. And again, that puts more pressure on data protection. All right, let's get into some of the hard news here. You've got kind of a, a four pack of news that we want to talk about. Uh, let's start with uh, Store Once. It's a platform you guys announced several years ago. You've been ev evolving it you know, regularly. What's the Store Once news? Yeah, so uh, in the secondary storage world, uh, we've seen the movement from uh, PBBA, so purpose-built backup appliances, either morphing into very intelligent software that runs on commodity hardware, or uh, an integrated appliance approach, uh, right? So you've got an integrated DR appliance uh, that seamlessly integrates into your environment. So what we've been doing with Store Once, this is our fourth generation system, and it's got a lot of great attributes as a system, right? It's available in a, in a, in a, um, a rote you know, form factor at different capacities. It's also available as a software-defined version, so you can run that on-prem, you can run it off-prem. Uh, it scales up to you know, multiple petabytes in a software-only version. So we've got a couple different use cases for it. But what I think one of the key things is that uh, we're providing uh, a very integrated experience for customers who are three-par, nimble customers. Um, so it allows you to essentially federate your primary all-flash storage with secondary. And then we actually provide a number of uh, use cases to go out to the cloud as well. Very easy to use, geared towards the application admin, very integrated. So it's bigger, better, faster, and you've got this integration or confederation, as you called it, across yep. different, different platforms. What's the key technical enabler there? Yeah, so we have a, a, a really extensible platform uh, for software that we call Recovery Manager Central. Essentially, it provides a number of different use cases and user stories around copy data management. So it's going to allow you to take application integrated snapshots. It's going to allow you to do that either in uh, the application framework. So if you're a DBA and you do RMAN, you could do it in there. Or if you have your own custom applications, you can write to the API. So it allows you to do snapshots, uh, full clones, it allow you to do DR, so one box to another similar uh, system, it allow you to go from primary to secondary, it allow you to archive out to the cloud, and then all of that in reverse, right? So you can pull all of that data back, and it'll give you visibility across all those assets. So it's the, the, the past where you, as a customer, did all this on your own, right? Bought on horizontal lines. We're giving a customer, based on a set of outcomes and applications, a complete vertically oriented solution. Okay, so that's the really second piece of hard news. Yep. Recovery, Recovery Manager Central RMC 6.0, yep. right, is the release that we're on. And that's that's a, a copy data management, essentially, Absolutely. is what you're talking about. It's 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 your catalog, right? So your, your tech on, underneath that, um, and you're applying that now across the portfolio, right? Absolutely, so we're extending that from, uh, we've had for the past year that ability to do uh, the copy data management directly from 3PAR, we're extending that to provide that for Nimble, right? So for Nimble customers that want to use all flash, they want to use hybrid flash arrays from Nimble, you can go to uh, secondary storage and store once and then out to the cloud. 
Okay, and that's what 6.0 yeah, enables, that, exactly. that, that nimble piece and that out to the cloud. Okay, third piece of news is an ecosystem announcement with Commvault, take us through that. Yeah, so we understand at HPE, uh, given the fact that we're very, um, very focused on hybrid cloud, uh, and we have a lot of customers that have been our customers for a long time, none of these opportunities are greenfield, right, at the end of the day, so your, your customers are, uh, they have to integrate with existing solutions. And in, in, in a lot of cases, they have uh, some partners for data protection. So uh, one of the things that we've done with this ecosystem is made very public our APIs and how to integrate our systems. So we're storage people, we're in, uh, we are uh, data management folks, we do big data, we also do infrastructure. So we know how to manage the infrastructure, move data very seamlessly between primary, secondary, and the cloud. And what we do is we open up those APIs in those use cases to all of our partners and our customers. So in that, we're uh, announcing uh, a number of integrations with Commvault, so they're going to be uh, integrating with our deduplication and compression framework, uh, as well as being able to program to uh, what we call Cloud Bank, right? So we'll be able to, in effect, integrate with Commvault with our primary storage, be able to do rapid recovery from store once and a number of backup uh, use cases, and then being able to go out to the cloud, all managed through you know, a customer's Commvault in interface. All right, so if I hear you correctly, just got to double click on the Commvault integration. It's not just a go-to-market uh, setup, it's, a, it's, it's, it's deeper engineering and integration that Absolutely. you guys are doing. Yep. Okay, great, and then of course the fourth piece is around, so your bases are loaded here. The fourth piece is around the, the, the cloud uh, economics, uh, cloud pricing model, your GreenLake model, the utility pricing has gotten a lot of traction. When you know when we're at HPE Discover, customers talking about mm -hmm. it. You guys have been you know, leaders there. Talk about GreenLake and how it fits. That model fits into this. Yeah. So uh, in 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 the technology talk track, we talk about essentially how to make this simple and how to make it scalable. Really, but at the end of the day, on the buying pattern side, customers expect elasticity, mm -hmm. right? So what we're providing for our customers is that when they want to do either you know a specific. Um, integration or implementation of one of those components from a technology perspective, we can provide that. If they're doing a complete re-architecture and want to understand how I can essentially use secondary storage better and I want to take advantage of all that data that I have sitting in there, I can provide that whole experience to customers as a service, right? So the primary storage, your secondary storage, the cloud capacity, even some of the ISV partner software that we provide, I can take that as an entire vetted solution with the reference architectures and the expertise to implement, and I can give that to a customer in uh, an, an OpEx uh, as a service uh, elastic purchasing model. Uh, and that is very unique for HPE, and that's what we've gone to market with GreenLake, uh, and we're going to pro pro be providing more solutions like that, um, but in this case, we're announcing uh, the fact that you can buy that whole experience, backup as a service, data protection as a service, through Green Lake uh, so, from HPE. So how does that work, Patrick, practically speaking? Uh, a customer will, what, commit to some level of, of, of capacity, let's say, as an example, and then you'll, HP will put in some extra headroom if in fact that's needed. You maybe sit down with the customer and do some kind of capacity planning. Or how, how does that actually work practically speaking? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with customers on uh, on the architecture, right, up front. So we have a set of vetted architectures. We try to avoid snowflakes, right, at the end of the day. We want, we want to talk to customers around outcomes. So if customers trying to reach outcome X, Y, Z, we come with a recommendation on how to do that. And uh, what we can do is we don't have very high upfront commitments uh, and it's very elastic in the way that we approach uh, the purchasing experience. So we're able to fit those modules in, and then we've made some number of acquisitions over the last couple of years, right? So on the advisory side, we have um, cloud technology partners. We mm -hmm. can come in and talk about how do you do a hybrid cloud backup as a service, right? So we can advise customers on how to do that and build that into the experience. We have, uh, we acquired Cl Cloud Cruiser, right? So we have the billing and the monitoring and everything that gets very, very granular on how you use that service. And and that goes into um, how we bill customers on a you know a per metric usage um, uh, format, and so we're able to package all of that up. And we have you know uh, this is kind of a little known fact: very very high NPS score for HPE financial services, right? So the combination of our point next services, advisory, financial services, really puts a, a lot of meat behind GreenLake uh, as a really good uh, customer experience around elasticity. Okay, now all this stuff is going to be available Q, calendar Q4 of 2018, correct? Correct. 
Okay, so if you've seen videos like this before, we like to talk about you know what it is, how it works, and then we like to bring it home with the business impact. So thinking about these four announcements, and you can drill deeper on any one that you like, but I'd like to start at least holistically. What's the business impact of all this? Obviously, you've got cloud. You know, we talked about some of the trends up front, but what are you guys telling customers is the real ROI? So I think the big ROI is um, it moves secondary storage from a TCO conversation to an ROI conversation, right? So instead of selling customers a solution where you're going to have data that sits there waiting for something to happen, I'm giving customers a solution that's consumed as a service to be able to mine and utilize that secondary data, right? Whether it's for, you know, simple tasks like patch verification, application rollouts, you know, things like that. I am actually lowering the cost of your primary storage in doing that, which is usually, you know, pretty expensive from a storage perspective. I'm also helping customers save time, right? By providing these integrated uh, experiences from primary to secondary to cloud and making that automatic. I do help customers save quite a bit in OpEx, you know, from an operator perspective, and they can take those resources and move them onto higher impact projects like DevOps, cloud ops, you know, things of that nature. So that's been very, uh, that's, a, that's a big impact for a customer perspective. So there's a CapEx to OpEx move for those customers that want to take advantage of, of GreenLake. Yep. So certain CFOs will, will like that story. But I think the, 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 the other piece that to me anyway is most important is, especially in this world of digital transformation, I know it's a buzzword, but it's real. When you go to talk to people, they don't want to do the heavy lifting of infrastructure management, the day-to-day -day infrastructure management. A lot of mid-sized customers, they just don't have the resources to do it anymore. Correct. And they're under such pressure to digitize. Every company wants to become a, a, a software company. You, you hear everybody talk, Benioff talks about that, Satya Nadella talks mm -hmm. about that, you know, Antonio talks about you know, digital transformation. And so it's on CEOs' minds. They don't want to be paying people for these mundane tasks. They really want to shift them to these digital transformation initiatives and drive more business value. Absolutely, and, th and that's, um, so you said it best, right? We want to drive the customer experience to focusing on high value things that will enable their digital transformation. So if, as a vision, what we're going to keep on providing, and you've seen that with InfoSight on Nimble, InfoSight for 3PAR, and our vision around AI for the data center, these tasks around data protection, they're repeatable tasks how to protect data, how to move data, how to mine that data. So if we can provide recommendations and some predictive analytics and experiences to the customers around this uh, and, and, and essentially abstract that and just have the customers focus on defining their SLA and we're worried about delivering that SLA, then that's a huge win for us and our customers. And that's, that's our vision, that's what we're going to be providing. Yeah, automation is the key. You've got some, some, some tools in the toolkit to help, help do that. And it's just going to escalate from here. It feels like we're on the early part of the S-curve and it's just going to really spike. Absolutely. All right, Patrick, hey, thanks for coming in and, and taking us through this news and congratulations on getting this stuff done and uh, we'll be watching in the marketplace. Great, Thank you. kudos to the team, great announcement and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you guys again. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante on theCUBE.